I'd like to welcome everyone to this information session on the residency program at the International uh, School in Stuttgart. I'm going to give you a little bit of a brief background as to how we arrived here, and why this info session is happening at the moment, uh, so that you can understand the motivation behind this particular <clears throat> session, as well as the program that we're working on. Uh, during this summer, I spent a little bit of time in Bosnia and Croatia, as I always do. I'm originally from there, so that kind of makes sense. And I was approached by a gentleman while I was at the beach, relaxing, taking in some sunshine. This gentleman's name was Vedran Kapitanovic. And Vedran and I have known each other for numerous years. We've collaborated online, as many of us do. Uh, but I never met him in real life. And I didn't actually know what he looked like in detail because I, I'm going to be fair and say his social media photos are some, somewhat out of date. So this gentleman, <laughs> this gentleman approached me uh, while I was at the beach and said to me, hey, are you Edhem Trustovic? And I said, yes, I am. I'm Vedran Kapitanovic. You may remember we've collaborated. And of course, I remember him because we've done a lot of work together. In fact, Vedran was very kind to donate a lot of uh, Texas Instrument scientific calculators a few years ago to the foundation, which we distributed to very talented students in high schools and elementary schools throughout Bosnia. A few hours later that afternoon, instead of just being a high and by type conversation, we ended up in a very deep conversation about what we could do together for education in Bosnia and Herzegovina. And then he mentioned to me, look, we have this residency program, which we've been running very successfully for quite a while. Uh, most of our candidates come from the US and the UK. I think it would be a great experience if we could get a teacher or more across to Germany to the international school to spend 12 months as a resident at our institution. And me being me, you don't have to mention things more than once. I thought it was a fantastic idea. And given the fact that education in Bosnia varies a lot, we have some outstanding examples of education and we have some very poor examples of education. In general, we are trying to, and thanks to many of the people on this call, you guys are standout candidates because you've made the effort to advance your knowledge of the domain. We are making changes in the educational system, somewhat slower than what we'd like to, but I believe, and I'm sure that Anya and Tim also and the colleagues believe that these types of experiences transform teachers and transform the way they think, they transform the way they teach, <clears throat> test, connect with peers around the world and introduce new methods of teaching. Being someone who teaches young people myself, I work at a university, which is a slightly different approach to education, but nevertheless, the core competencies are very much the same. We are transforming the lives of young people and we use whatever resources are available to us to make their experiences uh, fantastic. So what this session is going to be about is introducing you to the concept of a 12 month residency program at the International School in Stuttgart. You're going to hear from Anya and Tim, who are uh, seasoned veterans at this institution. You're also going to hear from some of the residents who are currently or who have in the past, I assume, been uh, at the program. So there's nothing better than to hear from people who have directly been in the program. We're going to run this se session for about half an hour, 40 minutes through all the information. And then we're really going to open it up to an info session Q&A. You will all have opportunities to ask questions. If you want to ask questions using your microphone, please raise your hand, just like we do in, in, in class as well. If you want to ask a question using uh, the chat box, I'll be monitoring the chat box throughout the session, so you can always write that down and I'll keep track of that as well. Other than that, I'd like to introduce our two speakers for today. I'd like to introduce Anya first. So Anya has been at the International School of Stuttgart since 1992, starting as a substitute teacher fresh out of college. The next year, she was lucky enough to teach with an experienced teacher who became a mentor to her. Now, 30 years later, she is excited to support other young teachers in having a similar experience. She is currently the Strategic Development Manager and Residency Program Coordinator at the International School in Stuttgart. Additionally, her experience as a primary years teacher and program coordinator, librarian, digital coach, and grade 10 design teacher have all helped her bring a variety of perspectives to her current role. Anya is also a workshop leader and developer and school visitor for the International IB or so IB program. She has 
two daughters aged 23 and 25. Anya, welcome to this session and everyone please make Anya welcome as well during the session. I know we're in a digital environment, but if you are on camera, Anya, welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Our second guest for this evening is Tim Kelly. Uh, Timothy Kelly, the director of the International School in Stuttgart, an international IB or IB World School has been an educator for over 30 years, formerly the head of Ross School in East Hampton, New York. Tim has also served as the headmaster for the Lucent American School in Switzerland. He began his career at the Noble and Brenner School in Denham, Massachusetts, United States, where he was an award-winning teacher and served as a department chair for both the history and performing arts departments. He subsequently became an international educator, visiting schools all over the world, as both an advocate for 21st century education, an accreditation officer for the Commission of American International Schools Abroad, and as a director of admissions prior to becoming the headmaster in, is it LACIN? I hope that I've got that correct. LACIN. LACIN. Mm -hmm. While at Ross School, Tim was privileged to work with some of the world's leading educational experts, including Howard Gardner and Kurt Fisher. In Switzerland, as a member of the Executive Committee for Swiss Group of International Schools, he directed conferences and was responsible for in-depth studies of technology integration in the classroom and mother tongue proficiency. Some time ago, Tim was elected to the Board of Associates of German International Schools and served as the chair of the board for the past six years. He also serves as the chair of the Board for Educational Collaborative for International Schools, formerly the European Council of International Schools. He's a member of the Academy of International School Heads and is a recipient of the Klingenstein Fellowship on Educational Leadership. Tim has been a speaker and presenter for TAISI, India, AAIE, AGIS conferences. He also frequently presents in schools all over the world for the American Chamber of Commerce in Stuttgart and Atlanta, Georgia. He's the founding member of the Stuttgart International Rotary Club and has worked with the International School of Stuttgart for 14 years. I think you'll all agree, very impressive biographies, and we want to thank Anya and Tim and the entire team for joining us this evening, and we look forward to hearing more about the International Residency Program. Thank you very much. Anya and Tim, I'll hand it over to you. Okay, good. I'm going to thank attempt you. to share my screen. I'd also just like to um, introduce you to Andrea Hake. Andrea, maybe if you can wave. Um, Andrea works alongside with me. We have two campuses, which you'll learn uh, at our school. And uh, I am mainly on the Degerloch campus and Andrea supports me uh, on, the on the Zindelfingen campus and we work together. So you'll hear from her. And we are also very privileged to have four of our residents with us. You guys wanna wave? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and they are staying up late just for this. <laughs> And they were very excited to join in. So you'll also be hearing from them as well. Okay. The, you know, one of the most important things about education is the ability to make eye contact and have face-to-face -face relational learning. So here we are, people. We're just doing it through the camera. So we're not going to PowerPoint you yet. We're going to talk to you first. And that's okay. Because really, what any great school is all about is the people's relationships. And that's kind of what started our, our internship used to be called an internship program. Now it's a residential program uh, many years ago, which is, we're on to our 14th year of doing this program. Um, because the school has always been committed to finding ways to get people excited about being a teacher. And what we found is by having, uh, I, I loved your term seasoned professional, you know, uh, maybe I have a little more seasoning than others, but we're all seasoned, right? And, uh, and the point is, is that we wanted to get kind of younger professionals in line with some of our uh, more seasoned professionals because there's a lot of affirmation going on there because we really wanted to take what we're doing, what we value about education and kind of start careers. And some of those careers actually stay with us in our school, but we're very proud of how many of our used to be intern, now resident alumni are all over the world teaching. And so for us, that's really is our values in action and our, and our, our chance to to kind of not only give back to the profession, but to inspire people into this wonderful job that, that we do. Uh, we're very, very lucky. Uh, maybe we can go to the next slide, uh, if you don't mind. Um, <clears throat> so just a little about us. 
Uh, in a nutshell, we're uh, we've been around a little while. Uh, we're a very well respected international baccalaureate school. Uh, we are accredited by the New England Association of Schools and Colleges, which is one of the older uh, prestigious accreditation uh, organizations in North America, not just the United States, but in North America. And we also, of course, are authorized as an international baccalaureate world school, which means used to mean all three programs. Now what they call that a continuum school. I still go up with the old nomenclature of the world school. So we have the prime years program, we have the middle years program, and we have the diploma program. Uh, we are also recognized locally here in Baden-Württemberg in Germany for being a mint school and for being digital student. What that means essentially is our philosophy of science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics, what we call STEAM, uh, is, is certified and recognized by local authorities as best practice. Uh, both from a, uh, a science, technology, engineering, and arts, uh, a, a maths approach, which is Mint in German, and the digital school is our commitment and leading position on how we work with technology in our classrooms and as we communicate. Um, the school has two campuses. The largest is in uh, just outside of Stuttgart itself in a town called Degelach. Our satellite campus, which is about uh, maybe a third of the size, a little more, is in uh, Sindelfingen, the capital of Mercedes-Benz. Uh, and we are really committed to providing kind of personalized education, which starts with, we just have a lot of folks working with the students. We have a, roughly a seven one student teacher ratio, which is really a spectacular ratio. We're a very nationality diverse place. Uh, we have staff also from all over the world. And we work primarily in English, but we respect home and family languages. So we, we have, particularly in our lower schools programs, we acknowledge up to six or seven different languages for a number of hours a week. We also, given our location, have a pretty strong track of German language learning from all of our grade lows up through the IB diploma. So, you know, we're an established school, strong reputation, a leader when it comes to conferencing, professional development. We do have the oldest, and most established teaching residency program in Central Europe. Uh, and uh, that allows us to meet a lot of interesting folks, such as all of you on the other end of the screen. Maybe we can go to the next slide. We spent a lot of time recently um, about four years ago, we as a school really took a very inclusive process of looking at what kind of school we wanna be in the future. We called it the future of education now. And that meant a significant investment in staff, significant investment in programming. And we are in the middle of a massive construction project, the single largest investment in our school's history, 25 million euros uh, uh, in redoing two thirds of our upper school in a state of the art manner. That project, the future of education now, which was launched just before COVID, and has been carrying us through COVID. But now that we're coming out of, I put in quotes, coming out of uh, the COVID pandemic, uh, we really decided we want to take a look last year as to where all our strategic priorities still valid. Has the world changed so much? Has education changed so much that we want to change that? As such, we embarked on a new program looking at what we call the future of education next. And we really spent some time using the repeat feedback from our accrediting visitors, uh, our own surveys, our own steering committees, conversations to really discuss where, where are we going? Is it still right? We were very happy to say that, yes, it is. We slightly tweaked our mission to become, to now we say we actively inspire, challenge, support students and each other to positively impact our dynamic and interconnected world. We did feel that we needed to note it to note how much things are changing and what that's doing to us as we develop our learners for their future. Along the way, we really took a look at what our values were. Many stayed the same, but there were some things we found that were a little more important to us, which ties into the relational notion of what we do. Focusing on caring, competence, character. We really want to treat others the way we want to be treated. We really want to have balance in the way we learn. We want everyone to feel safe and that they belong. We don't want to give back to our community. And of course, we're teaching skills of learning, critical thinking, and what it means to be globally minded. Character is increasingly important. You all read the news. 
And we feel very strongly that we need to promote integrity. We need to instruct and inspire courage to do things, not just talk about them. And we want to demonstrate initiative creativity and celebrate effort. You know, in other words, take a look at the drive that is moving our um, learners forward. Of course, we live in the auto capital of Germany. So any kind of allusion to driving their cars, we're going to fit in. Hence the whole notion of driving learning forward. Um, uh, after all, people, I do fundraise. So we need to work with Bosch. We need to work with Porsche. We need to work with Mercedes-Benz. We need to work with Daimler Truck. We need to work with Smart Car, all of which call Stuttgart home. Next slide, please. Okay, so that's going to be me. So meet our team this year. Uh, throughout this presentation, uh, we also hope to demonstrate how really this program is our values that Tim has just described in action. So for example, we treasure community partnership and collaboration, and that is really what is at the heart of the program. Here you can see the first meeting of this school year uh, with the mentor teachers and the residents there uh, together. And uh, we, we meet uh, the residents, I see them every week, they come together every week, and a couple of times a year, we try to get the whole team together. Uh, so this was a very exciting day for me and I, I hope and I think also for everyone in the group because it was just a chance to really get to know each other. And uh, you have to remember that these are people who are spread across the school. We've got three residents who are in our lower school, uh, three in our upper school and two who are in Zindelfingen. So uh, it is a great opportunity to, to, to all come together and learn together. Next slide. So a little bit about this ISS resident that we have been mentioning and talking about, what does that really mean? I think uh, at the heart of the program, just to put it in a nutshell, it's a chance for uh, young teachers or people who are, um, have uh, educational experience to come into an established international school and an IB school at that. So we, we are uh, a member of the IBO organization and, and authorized by them, and to experience what that's like. What does it mean to, to teach in an IB program? Um, and to do that though, in a way that is supported and where you're mentored and you're not just thrown in, but rather you are led in and supported on your journey throughout the year. And you will leave the program having practical experience that you can take back into other schools, um, into other situations throughout your life uh, to, to really benefit from that experience. So that, that's really great. Next slide. Uh, part of what the resident does, and you'll hear much more about it in much more interesting terms from the residents themselves, but basically you would be in a classroom, you're assigned your mentor teacher, you're in the classroom with that mentor teacher, and supporting activities, leading activities, co-teaching with the teacher, building relationships with the students um, in various ways, depending on the age groups, uh, and also really being involved in the community. That's another really important part of the program is uh, getting involved uh, in sports, in after-school activities, in, in other kinds of events. There's a lot going on around the school. And uh, you're also going to be I always say to, to the residents, um, you're going to know all the kids in the school better than anybody else, or at least in your division, because you do a lot of uh, substitute teaching as well, which is a real plus because you get to not only know the students in the class that you are um, placed in, but you also get to meet all of the other kids. And that's really, uh, I think, also a very special part of the program. Next slide. And I will hand over to Andrea, who will tell you a little bit about what the role of a mentor teacher is. Yeah, the mentor teacher, um, usually it's, I mean, we're all open-minded and we are dedicated to this program. So you will always find a motivated mentor that you will be working with. Um, they get you collaboratively integrated into the classroom. They plan with you. They give you feedback on your teaching. Um, they support you in your goal setting and to achieving these goals. Um, 
they will see who you are to in integrate your skills, what, who you are into their classroom routine so that you feel welcome and you can try out new things, be a risk taker. Um, and then you will be able to take on board more and more um, um, responsibilities in the classroom and hopefully you would be growing both of you would it's a give and take yeah you're all learning together and experiencing new possibilities it's a lot of team teaching also where you can experience oh we're, I'm not alone in the classroom it's a new way or a new experience to be um, teaching um, you can go to the next slide where you can also see some pictures. There you can see that there's the resident and the mentor. They're sort of in the classroom talking through what they were doing and teaching together. There's observational aspects where you get the feedback, what you have been doing. And then there's the planning of your lessons and discussing and feedback. So this is sort of what the mentor teacher does. Okay, next slide over back to Tim. I mean, for us, learning is at the core of what we do. And we, we really take a lot of time thinking about what learning is. That's one of my favorite things about our school is we're not afraid to question things. Uh, and we're not afraid to, to seek answers as long as it's about learning and as long as it's about inspiring learning, especially in our younger learners, but really in all of us. So we spent a lot of time defining what learning means. And essentially you can see here how we define that. It's key that it's transformative. It's taking things they know like predispositions experience in their lives and developing a lot of skills to connect and synthesize things. We understand what the differences between skills, understanding, nurturing, developing character. Essentially, we think that learners need to understand what they're learning, why they're learning it. We want them to be autonomous. We want them to do their own self-direction. We want them to think about their strengths and look at their successes, how it happened, as well as take risks to experiment and learn from mistakes. I think what we're trying to do as a school, uh, and I think all schools need to work at this, is we're trying to look at mistakes not as failures, but as steps, ways to move forward. We also believe learning is when people make connections with one another and the relevance of the world outside of our school and being able to embrace different perspectives with humility uh, and really understand that we are a diverse community. We all are safe in this diverse community and we all appreciate our different views. More recently, we, we in included some of our new values in there. You can see that in the top blue where we develop character competence and a caring disposition. And down below, we spent a little bit more time clarifying what self-directed learning is. Really, essentially, students understanding that they have the agency, they have control of their own journey, and that we're not delivering knowledge to them. We're guiding them, them to seek it themselves. And, and that's exactly what we also try to mirror in the residency program, is this definition of learning is as true for <clears throat> students as it is for our teachers and, and others in our community. And that includes- And the school directors. And the school directors. Okay, and on that note, if we go to the next slide, I'm gonna hand over to the first of the residents, to Bella, who's gonna tell us a little bit about uh, learning about the IB programs. Yeah, hi, um, I'm Bella. I teach in upper school. I'm a, uh, I teach INS, so humanities basically. Um, but this slide is an example of something that I made as part of a project that we've been working on with Anya um, in our like IB workshop sessions that she mentioned. So every week we meet together and we're working on different aspects of being an effective IB, both learner and teacher. As she said, it's twofold. Mm -hmm. Um, so this is something that we've all taken on. We have started observing a single student. And the purpose of this is kind of deep into the role of a teacher. So I think we'll all agree that part of teaching is being good at forming relationships with kids and getting to know them as an individual. Um, so with this student, I interviewed 
them and then spent some time observing them in my classroom. And then I went on to think about, okay, how can I support the student as an IB learner? So what do they already have? Like, what are they bringing to the table that I can celebrate? And on the left, I kind of pulled out the language that the IB uses. So IB profile, um, these words, inquirer, communicator, open-minded. These are aspects of successful IB learners that we learn to cultivate and celebrate. So these are things that the student had. And then I thought about, okay, so where can I push them further? Where can I help them to take that extra step? So through that, we were focusing on both the IB learner profile, but then the ATL skills, which is approaches to learning, which is a key core of um, the IB. So through this process, not to drown you out in IB terms, but the the point really is that the residency program gives you that space to practice the finer skills of teaching and then to discuss it with a group um, and to work on it over time. So that is an example of what we've done together. And then on the next slide, um, this is kind of an homage to the bounty of opportunities that ISS has. So on the left, this photo was something that we were able to do talking about goals for sustainable development and how we can incorporate those as teachers. And then on the right, this MUN at ISS, we actually had a really cool thing today where we had model United Nations where students were put into um, committees of 20 to 25 students, sorry, <clears throat> I've been a little sick. Um, and they were put into country pairs and their topics were around sustainability. So for the younger kids, it was protein in the planet. So the sustainable, like looking at food and fueling people from a sustainable lens. And then for older kids, it was resources. Um, so it's really cool because it gives them an opportunity to practice diplomacy and look at the skills that are required in a real world situation, but also like international empathy and to think about how might you negotiate, how do you take on the role of somebody else or a different perspective. Um, and I think something that's really great about ISS is that, <clears throat> sorry, there is like truly an abundance of opportunities, whatever your interest is. I've been very impressed that we've all had the opportunity to dive into things and so have the students. So it's very cool. And then I'll pass it on. Hi, I'm Mallory. I'm in the lower school in kindergarten. Um, this is a screenshot of my portfolio. So all of us residents are able to work on portfolios and evidence our own learning, just like we do with our students throughout the year, we get to document what we're learning in our with our mentor teacher and that has what we've done in the past like our own learning journey and then also just things that we've done in our classrooms and our learning community in the school because mine looks different than Bella's in upper school um, and this is a screenshot of mine talking about my goals so four times a year at the start of the year and then two times in the middle and then at the end we go over our goals and we set three new goals and it gives us the opportunity to meet with Anya and our mentor teacher just about these and have these authentic conversations about what we want to get out of this experience. What are we still working on? What do we want to continue to learn and help us grow in our journey as an educator? And it's really nice because it naturally lends itself to what we're doing with Anya in our IB weekly trainings and then also with our professional development as a school as a whole we're able to be involved in that and that allows us to meet our goals as well that's it <laughs> okay hi I'm Dory uh, I work at the upper school with Bella I also do INS which is humanities um, so for engaging with the community, um, I think as a resident, they make it really easy for us to engage with the community. Um, I remember interviewing with Tim and he kind of went through a list of things that I could help with. And I was like, I want to do all of it. Um, and I've really been able to do that. So, um, if you look at the picture of all the girls in that like highlighter pink, 
<laughs> um, those are the girls that myself and Cameron, we coach them in volleyball. So we go to tournaments with them and have a great time. Um, but all of us have been able to coach. So Bella coaches swimming, um, Mallory's coaching soccer, and we were all kind of given the opportunity to kind of pick what fit best for us and being able to be involved with that. Um, and that's just another way we can meet students. Um, another way that they've let us kind of get involved is Bella and I do this thing called Duke of Edinburgh which is where students can sign up for it when they're in ninth or 10th grade. And it's something they work on throughout their entire time um, in the upper school. And they have to complete four different categories. So they have to learn a skill. They have to do a certain amount of hours of service, certain amount of hours of fitness, and then they go on an expedition. So we're supervisors for that. So we help them kind of understand each of those goals, how to attain those girl, those those goals and then for the expedition we take them on a practice one and we kind of teach them how to camp and you know how to create a path for their trail to meet a certain amount of miles or kilometers and then that we um we send them off on one completely on their own so we'll send a group of maybe six students out camping for a night by themselves and we kind of check in with them maybe sneak up on them a little bit and kind of see how they're doing but you know just those those are just two examples of some of the things we've been able to get involved with but there's so many more we can do and if you click on the next one um so another part of the residency program um, is summer camp, which is something that you can do. So we all did summer camp. And I think one thing that's great about it is not only does it give you time to get used to, you know, this new place you're living in, but it gets you comfortable with the school before school really kicks off. So it's super fun. We, I um, work in the upper school and I got to work with kids all the way down to the age of probably about grade three. So that was really exciting to like work with kids in an age group that I maybe am not as comfortable with. And that really maybe gave me a better perspective working with the younger kids on how to, you know, how can that help me with the older kids? Because sometimes it does look very similar when you don't realize it. But each week had a theme. And for that theme, we would pick like a broad um, project for them to do. So we did boat making one week where we gave them just random materials and they had to create a boat that could hold a certain amount of weight. And we did little races with them through a little baby pool um, and just giving them little projects to kind of make them think. And then we also do fun things like taking them to the pool that's like closer in town, um, teaching them about different things. So it's kind of, you know, taking school, but putting it in like a summer camp atmosphere. You can go ahead and go to the next one. Okay, so um, I hope that 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 was brilliant. Thank you, uh, you three, uh, giving you a real insight into what maybe the day to day is really like as being a resident in the school. And it isn't just about being a teacher in the classroom; it's about being a member of our community and um, contributing to that in with with all your skills and talents. And we we really welcome that. And uh, in turn, we also want to, you know, live up to our mission and inspire, challenge, and support you. So supporting the residents. And we definitely see our, our residents as equal and valued members of the community who, although maybe less years of experience, um, bring such a, a multitude of, of important perspectives and new ideas to the program, to the school that we all benefit from. So it's very much a two-way street. Um, we do support the, the residency program through housing. You'll hear a little more about that in a minute. Um, supporting with health healthcare, visa advice, some, some travel support and advice as needed. We have a, a great human resources team that, that does all of that work. Uh, you, you, they um, get a laptop just like any other teacher. We are very digital um, at times, and uh, you do you would need a laptop on a day, daily basis to do the work. Um, there's time allocated for teaching and learning, so we're quite particular about the the timetable and the shape of a week for the resident, making sure that there's time to meet with their resident teacher, uh, to meet with me, to have time to do some of their own planning to do um, definitely three hours of teaching that are blocked um, every week. And then other times are filled with uh, subbing as needed 
and other activities or just be continuing to be in the classroom with the mentor teacher and participating in, in normal classroom life. Uh, professional development is, is part of uh, the experience in working with me and working again with the mentor teacher as well. Uh, that learning process with the goal setting and, and our residency standards. And um, yeah, so just making sure that all of that really fits coherently together. Next slide. And, uh, and then of course, the residents with their rights also like all of us have responsibilities and we do take our ISS professional code of conduct quite seriously. And uh, we, we just, you see it in our values, that's basically what it is. Um, and we expect that to be, you know, all community, community members to uh, live, live those values. Uh, child protection is also very important to us. We have child protection teams uh, who work in the school, who do professional development for teachers, and we have systems in place and uh, we expect our residents uh, as much as any other person who works with our students to be aware of what those regulations are and um, really you know, valuing our values, character, competence, and caring as, as Tim described and uh, the, the supporting, challenging and inspiring, again, two-way street, we, we all do it. We all have that responsibility. Next slide. Okay, Cameron. Hi, I'm Cameron. I am in first grade at Dagger Lock in the lower school. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the rival process. As someone who has never lived out of my home country, this being my first time out of the U.S., um, the arrival process was very important to me. And we were lucky enough to have ISS such a supportive school um, as our first school to come to. I think that's really important for anywhere you go, um, whether that's ISS or anywhere in the world. It's really important to have that program that is going to support you in moving to a different country because it can be very overwhelming and it's a long process with a lot of different things to do. Um, but HR was someone that I was in communication a lot with before coming here, just with all different types of questions. And one thing I loved is that they never hesitated to answer a question and um, to help us and support us, which is really great. And like Anya said, we were also provided with a relocation agent who helped us with visas and the moving in process, which is just absolutely critical. There's a lot of things that I you know, didn't know before coming in that were was required for moving overseas. And with that relocation agent, she was really able to help every single one of us with those little details. Um, and so, yeah, once we got here, we are all living in this house together. There are seven of us and we're really lucky to have such a wonderful place um, we all have our own rooms, plenty of space. We have two kitchens that we share and three bathrooms. We live on three different floors. Um, so we're very well spread out and we have our space in our area. And then we have a little common area, as you can see in the picture on the left is our living room, which is where we're at now. And, um, Everything has been fully furnished for us, which was also really amazing. We came in and the house was ready. It was completely set up and ready for us to get started and um, get started into summer camp and stuff like that, which is amazing to have. It's, you know, a relief off your shoulders. It was really great. Um, we also only live like 10 minutes from the school by bus, which is also awesome. We can get there really quickly. Um, we have great access from where we are into the town, of, like into the center of Stuttgart. It takes us about 25 minutes by train to get into Stuttgart, which is awesome. Um, we often do that. There's tons of fun stuff to do in Stuttgart. It's really a great place to live. It's uh, very safe and very comfortable. There's a diverse amount of things to do, um, food and shopping 
there's tons of festivals. It's one of my favorite things about being in this area, especially of Germany, is there are so many different festivals happening all the time. Like you just look online any weekend, you can find something to do. It's really a great community to be a part of. And I think especially moving overseas for the first time, moving to a place like Stuttgart is definitely ideal. I mean, I think I've had a great experience with even strangers on the street are very kind. I think Germans kind of get a bad rep at times that they're very, you know, standoffish. But honestly, I think in Stuttgart, that's definitely not the case. I mean, everyone has been very kind and supportive. And um, so, yeah, it's it's been really good. Um, and there's also lots of nature and stuff like that around. So if that's your type of thing, um, there's more than just the city. We actually live right by um, this open farm and there's tons of walking trails in our area, lots of hiking things you can do. Um, there are some lakes also nearby, which is awesome. So yeah, it's definitely a great place to be if you're interested. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so <clears throat> next screen. We we think we've covered everything. Um, that's that's kind of the scope of the program from our perspective. But we are excited to hear any of your thoughts and to answer any questions that you may have. So Eddie, I'm going to just hand back over to you. I think. Okay. First of all, thank you very much uh, to all of you for giving us a comprehensive overview of the program, uh, as well as the experiences. And it's fantastic to see all the photos, which really paint the picture of how much of an exciting environment it is to learn and contribute to and, and build, build your career. So thanks very much for that. Uh, with that being said, I'm gonna open this thing up for questions and discussion. I, I, I have a few questions written down myself, uh, which I know the answers to, but I think it'll be good for the, re uh, for the future residents, applicants to, to know about as well but I won't hold the microphone to myself. I'm gonna open it up completely to everyone else. So what I will ask of all of our guests here is that you raise the digital hand if you haven't done that before, uh, you can find that in the menu. Uh, and if you do that, I'll be able to see that and I'll be able to give you the microphone. So please raise your hand if you have a question. I'll give you a few seconds to build up Maybe some great Maybe we could unshare the screen so we yeah. can see yes. people a little better, if you wouldn't mind. That's great. Yeah. Thank you. Great. There we go. These first questions are always the toughest. People are going to build the confidence yeah. up to break the ice. I noticed in the chat that somebody asked about age limit. Yeah. Okay, that's we, there's a question. Yep. You know, we've had a number of different ages. Typically, we have people coming in who are, um, we've had second career professionals come in and do this in the past. Uh, they tend to be uh, more of a local, have an additional housing assignment. Um, most, I would say 90, 95% of our, of our residents tend to be between right after university. So you're talking about anywhere from 21 to to 25, 26. We don't have a limit, but that tends to be our comfort zone. Thanks for answering that, Tim. All right, while we're waiting for people to build up a bit of courage, uh, my question to you guys is timelines. Can we talk a little bit about the timelines? I, I have all the information on the web page, and I will share that with all of the, the attendees tonight, as well as an email which will comprehensively summarize all of that. But can we talk a little bit about the timelines in terms of what's expected from now until the potential start date uh, next summer in July? Sure. Do you want me to ask that, Ani? Do you want? Yeah, to? go go ahead, Tim. Sure. Well, first of all, applying is something that needs to happen really within the next four, four and a half, four four weeks, and then we have a three week break, and then we have two weeks of school, and then we go to start to visit various hiring fairs. And, and that's really when people start to send us their things. So honestly, if you're interested in this, it would be best for you to apply prior to the uh, winter break, which for us starts in the second week of December. It's not essential, but it's it would be helpful for you. Uh, the applications, you go onto our website and there's information there. Uh, we will then be setting up uh, video interviews 
in January <clears throat> with a number of select people. Typically, we take a, a two or three tur day turnaround to decide. And then there is, once we make an offer, there is a period of time where we need to work with our own internal processes. It takes usually about a week. Uh, and then that's done and dusted. Thereafter, we immediately reach out and start to work on visa processes with Viola Ovik, our relocation expert. And <clears throat> then we begin a process of connecting uh, the residents with one another, but most importantly to Anya, mm -hmm. who then begins to prepare them. Uh, if they choose to work in the summer program, we're going to be connecting people with the summer director, usually around May-ish, uh, sometimes in April. Anya then works to provide an online experience for pre-training. Do you want to take it from there, Anya? Yeah, sure. Yeah, so that's what we did. I think it was maybe around early May, right? Um, mm -hmm. We all got together online because uh, the residents don't know each other, right? Before they come in, they're coming from all over the place. And so it was just a nice opportunity to see some faces and uh, ask those questions and get to know each other a little bit. Last year, all the residents did uh, were part of the summer camp. And something that was a real benefit from my perspective, I think, was that they actually came to Stuttgart while we were in our last week of school. And it was a great chance um, for me to bring them into school for the last few days. They got to briefly meet their mentor teacher already and you know, could kind of exchange emails and see, you know, put a name to a face. And um, so that was that was actually really beneficial. So I would hope that anybody who would join the, the summer camp would be able to also have that same timeline of coming in during our last few days of school and just get a get a feel for it. Um, then it's not so overwhelming. Uh, then summer camp, if you're doing it, otherwise, then you would join us kind of um, at the beginning of August, starting in mid-August, we have an induction week for all new teachers, and the residents are part of that process. Uh, and then the following week, all of our teachers come back and we have a three-day orientation uh, with all teachers before the students come uh, you know, for everybody to get to know each other and get settled in. And so you, there's plenty of time to sort of ask the questions and see where things are. And it'll be an interesting situation on the Degerloch campus next uh, next August. As Tim mentioned, we have a new building going up and uh, we will be moving. So the new residents will be part of that process too, particularly the upper school residents. Does that kind of cover it, Eddie? Yeah, absolutely. I think that's very comprehensive. And some of that information is on the web as well. So that's, that's exactly. great. Uh, we have one more question here from Adnan who says, and I'm trying to get a clarification. He says, in Bosnia, we usually teach only one subject. I think what he means is we teach one domain area. Uh, as I heard, we're going to do some substitute teaching. How is that going to fit? Mm -hmm. Does one of the residents want to cover answer that? Bella? Um, I feel like what might make this make a little more sense is just kind of like what our week looks like. So we might come in. Um, so for me on Mondays, I teach my class Monday. We have four blocks in a day. This is for the upper school. It looks a little different in the lower school. But for the upper school, we have four blocks in a day. Um, so if I come in on Monday, I teach during that first block. Um, I teach my class when that block's over. I have an open block, so I might get assigned to another class where I'll be given cover work from whatever that class's teacher is. I'll be able to either teach a lesson for them or they might have online class or they might have a project they're working on. So I'll just be there to kind of assist in any way needed. And then after that, I do um, a push-in class. So I go into another teacher's class um, that might need a little extra help because of, you know, there's more students in that class or some of those students might need um, need to help them, you know, sit down and talk through things a little more. And then for my fourth block, I'll have an open block again where I could be assigned a teacher's class. So I'll go help out in that way. And each day, my day, it might look a little different, but overall it's four blocks in a day. And I have my set times where I can go and I will teach my class. And then I have set times that are meant for me to do planning. So I can meet with my mentor teacher and we can plan for our next class 
or that might mean, you know, that day I don't need to do any planning, so I might go observe another teacher. And the teachers at ISS are really open to letting us come sit in on their classes. So it might be a class I've never taught before, but I can go in and kind of get a better idea of what their class looks like, their teaching style, ask them questions about that. So I think in the upper school, that's mostly what it looks yeah. like. Um, but I teach only, INS is the class that I teach. I only teach that class. But with subbing, I could kind of get put with any type of class. But you won't, you won't ever have to like plan for yep. a class that you don't know how to teach that's not in your like training. Mm -hmm. Like I also teach humanities. I can't plan a math class. It wouldn't fit into the curriculum, but I can go to a math class um, and set up students to complete their work and work with them and support them when their teacher's out. It's just like continuing that learning when teachers are gone. That's really your role. You're not taking, like putting on a hat that wouldn't fit. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, thanks very much. I think that clarifies the question. So I think Adnan may have been worried that he's going to be teaching a maths class if he's not a math uh, teacher. So. Or, or physics. Yeah, all physics. That's great. No, absolutely not. Exactly. No, 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 no. All right. Any more questions from, from our guests here? All right. We have another question from Yasna. She says, I'm a music teacher at secondary music school. My domains are music theory, music forms, harmony, and classical guitar. Do I have any chance to apply to your school? Or if, am I eligible to your school? Might be the better question. Sure. sure. We, we, um, you know, we get asked all the time, do we have specialists? And yes, we look at that from time to time. Sometimes we want to have somebody who's got a little more science experience or somebody with a little more music experience. But generally, we're looking at the, the people. You know, generally, we're, we're interested in the kind of people applying their dedication to students, their dedication to learning process, because we can bend to create an experience for the individual. Sometimes we are looking for special need. To two, three years ago, longer than that, actually, four or five years ago, we uh, hired then a music intern because she was an accompanist and we needed to have somebody accompany the musical. Uh, she ended up being an EAL teacher for us. She was from Korea. Uh, and so, you know, what you do is important to you. And we, we try to respect that. But our first and foremost pieces to look at the personality, look at the dedication to the craft, look at, you know, your learning styles and your teaching commitments. And then we we see where we can make it work for you as well. Uh, we are uh, rebuilding our music program a little bit. It took a bit of a hit during COVID. I'm sure that happened where you are too. Um, regulations were limiting things like singing because it was unhealthy. I'm not making this up. Uh, you know, this is crazy. And so we, our music program took a hit. So we're kind of rebuilding that. So yes, we would be interested in somebody who could teach music generally as a, as a teaching resident. Fantastic. There you go, Yastam. You've got your marching orders to apply. <laughs> hopefully, that, hopefully that encourages you to, to apply. Okay, Anida says, do you have a subject of science or physics, biology, chemistry uh, individually? Do you have a subject of... Uh, Anida, can you please clarify that question? What do you mean by individually? I'm not sure what you mean by that question, unless Anya and Tim understand. I, I think... Does it single know. subjects? Is that no, probably... Oh, as individually. <laughs> Often in high schools, we, we offer all three of those subjects in science, plus yeah. for older students, we have something called environmental science. Um, but we often in younger high school grades, ninth and 10th, we have something called integrated science, where it's not just single subject. You have all three subjects kind of covered. Now, we are reevaluating how we're doing upper school sciences for the next year. So this is one of these, you know, watch this space kind of questions. But yes, we have all three subjects represented in our science programs. All of our resources are geared to supporting these subject areas. And uh, we also additionally will have some level of inter science, integrated science, but we're still deciding which grade level that's going to be. Thank you. Adnan? Oh, sorry. We had Adnan, before you go, we had one more question from, uh, I believe, Slobodan. He said, I'm a traffic engineer. I teach logistics and transport systems. 
uh, am I eligible for the ISS program? Well, uh, if you can fix our par parking problem, I would say yes. Uh, absolutely, get over here. Uh, no, we. The residents are laughing with me because, my goodness, that's the most dangerous thing about our school: is traffic in the mornings, pick drop off and pickups in the afternoons. Uh, all kidding aside, as I said before, in the past we have had some second career kind of people uh, apply to us. We're really interested in in those with experience of working with children. Anya and I had a very in-depth discussion about that this afternoon. Uh, so we're very committed to people who are committed to the craft of teaching and to looking in teaching. But we also understand that people also may have a lot of life experience or student experience that could be translated. I never tell anybody not to apply. I just think that's silly. You should always roll the dice. But at the end of the day, we don't have any specific needs for a traffic engineer. But we are interested in somebody who maybe is interesting in engineering human beings. Thank you. Adnan, go for it. Yes, yes. <laughs> to, to hear some voices at, yeah, uh, at last. Grüße an alle in Deutschland und in Stuttgart. I do have a question for our, uh, for our host. Um, I, I suppose you've already had some experience with, uh, you know, sending people uh, in some other countries. Uh, how does it go? I mean, we are probably all working teachers. We do have our, our classes and, 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 our, and our, at, at our schools. Um, how uh, is there any uh, experience in, uh, in, in, in uh, procedures? Uh, how to get a year off, how is it uh, going to be uh, accepted by our uh, institutions? Are we going to have a, I don't know, unpaid year off uh, in our institutions? Uh, is, is there any, 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 any kind of um, connect? Uh, have you had any connections to, to the ministries? If there, is the, is the program, this program, particular program approved by them? Are they going to make any kind of you know problems in uh, in in this in this respect. Is that is that directed to us or to uh, Eddie? to Mr. Chustovic? Oh, okay. Well, Mr. Chustovic may not be the best person to answer this question. The short yeah. answer is this is the first time that we're doing something like this. So I probably should have given an introduction to what our foundation does in Bosnia. But I kind of assume that some of you would at least know about it, but if not. So this is the first time we as an organization are working together with the International School in Stuttgart to try and send one or more teachers from Bosnia to their school. So it's a new experience for us. Uh, we don't have experience in terms of how we deal with schools, but I think we can ask Anya and Tim and also the residents um, how that's worked in the past, given that people do have active roles in their countries, whether they're in the US or not. So if they're coming from another school, how does that work? How does that get negotiated with the school where the teacher is currently based in when they're moving across uh, to, to, to Germany? So I think that's probably the most, uh, I guess, uh, intriguing question for most teachers in Bosnia, how are they going to get 12 months off to spend 12 months in Germany and then come back? So maybe some advice on that team, Anya and team. Not 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 only that, but also uh, the, the the procedure of of of, of getting a visa for uh, and, and and the work permit for uh, citizens of of Bosnia is a little bit the procedure itself is a little bit different since we are not the members of European Union and there might be some some you know uh, time consuming efforts and you know it it doesn't run so smoothly as it probably does with 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 some other yeah. you UN residents. So, so this this is the yeah. this, this so before culture. Tim and before Tim and Anya answer that question in terms of uh, how you get time off from your school or what are the best practices, I will say this: our foundation primarily works with young people, so we work with students from high school all the way through to PhD level, and to date we've sent hundreds of uh, BH students to probably twenty five countries around the world for work experience research stints from two weeks to 12 months. So we got a lot of experience in doing that and we can assist you from our end you know, with advice. In this case, I think it's a little bit more specific because you're applying to a predefined, well-established program, which has its you know, parameters. And I think Anya and Tim can talk to that 
and say, okay, here's how the procedure works. But to be honest, I don't think it's going to be that much different for applications from Bosnia as it would to the US. The visa applications might be different, but the process would be very, very similar for most people. So Tim and Anya, I'll leave it to you guys. Typically, uh, it's a good question. We really can't answer what your local systems can do in giving you time off whether you have sabbaticals or anything like that. That's not our our, our purview. Uh, and 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 I would say the majority of the folks who come to us come to us for a one year experience to then launch them. <clears throat> we have had experienced teachers come to us and work in our programs in the past, primarily to get IB experience. Because if you want to work in the international school world, yep. uh, to have an IB, one of the most dreaded questions for people who are just starting in the international school world is, do you have any IB experience? And pe most people, they say, no, but I'm willing to learn. I mean, if I had you know, a euro for every time and somebody said that to me, I'd be building my own school. Uh, at the end of the day, we provide a certain level of experience and people use us to launch. So I don't know of anybody who came to us on a one-year experience and then went back to teaching at the same school. I don't think we've ever had that, to be honest with you. Uh, that's not to say it couldn't happen, but I don't think we've ever had that. What we do have is, you know, I can never guarantee German bureaucracy. Uh, uh, you know, you have the Japanese nation, the German nation, the Bosnian nation, but there is, in fact, in this world, one bureaucratic nation. They're all the same, no matter what language they speak, and nobody can ever predict what's going to happen. However, we do have, and the residents can back me up on this, we do have what I refer to as the Virlaneta. Viela Ulrich is our reload specialist, and I'm not kidding, she is the best in our state. Uh, colleagues, right or wrong? There you go. So you. you would meet with Virla, you would begin the process right away. I should tell you, we do have a number of Bosnian colleagues already here at our school. Yeah. Oh. Um, uh, we have Croatian. We've got both. We got everybody from that part of the world. So, you know, we just we just delve in. You just apply. Often you have to do it in your local embassy, local German embassy, uh, to begin the process. Uh, and it usually takes two to three months, which is exactly why we try to complete our hiring no later than February. So we help guide you through it. We cover the cost of it um and 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 that's what we do to get you into germany how you return home or how you return to another job is over to you unfortunately we you know i would say we're a highly respected school we are fully accredited by you know a multinational organization so most people get a lot of credit for what they do with us the ib organization authorizes us at a very very high level so, you know, the chances of you getting credit, if you're not going to get it, I'm trying not to brag here, but honestly, if you're not going to get a school like ours, you're just not going to get it, right? I mean, we are very well known in the European community, especially for being a high quality school. So I will brag. Yeah. We Thank are. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. If, if I might just add to that, um, obviously, this is being the first experience for us as well. We want to establish this as an annual collaboration with the International School in Stuttgart. Uh, we will learn from this first instance like we do. We have a lot of clever people uh, volunteering in our foundation, educational specialists, principals, professors, engineers, you name it. So what we will learn from this is the ins and outs of doing it through Bosnia rather than doing it for the United States. And I'm sure there are little tweaks that will uh, pick up along the way but uh, the question was a really really good one and something that I also thought about you know how do we ensure if a teacher has a job that they may retain this job and team made a very good point that may not be the case so there is a little bit of risk involved in doing this just like everything in life you may pause or you may suspend or you may completely uh, eliminate your current working environment to get a new 12-month experience what I want to work with you on, if you're a successful candidate or if you're shortlisted, is working with you 
through the school that you're employed at and through my contacts in Bosnian diplomacy, including ministries, to ensure that you're not unfairly dismissed because you want to undertake a 12-month experience in Germany. Because my goal with this program is to try and scale what we do at the International School in Stuttgart with other international schools around the world to, on an annual basis, send 50 to 100 teachers from Bosnia on six to 12-month residencies and bring <coughs> that know-how back into the country. So I'm not doing this because I want you to have a great time in Germany. By all means, I'm sure that's going to be great. <coughs> I'm doing this because I want to really bleed in new practices into Bosnian education and use my influence through various you know, political pipelines to ensure that you guys are treated as people who are bringing back gold, not people who are, oh, you went and now you're gone and therefore don't come back. We don't need you anymore. So I will do my best to help you uh, in that part so that Tim and Anya and the team are not burdened with having to think about how they deal with uh, you know, Bosnian bureaucracy and politics within schools. I think it's important to say that our interest in speaking to you all is we're interested in diversifying our pool. Uh, we, I believe we've had a Bosnian intern years ago who worked in our library. Am I right on that, Anya? I'm not sure. sure. But at the end of the day, we're interested in having people we typically have hired from North America, UK, Australia, right? This is typically what we've had for obvious reasons. We're an English speaking environment. But for us to have a couple of colleagues from, from your part of the world is exciting to us. And this yes. is exactly why we're here. We want to work with our residency program to diversify our perspective and learn from the people coming in as well. I mean, the yep. four women you just heard from, they're not just taking stuff from us. The <laughs> stuff that they're giving to the co-teachers they're working with, the relationships they're developing with the kids, these are things that we're getting from them. And that really matters to us. We like getting folks who are new to ISS. We like that influx of new ideas. We like that influx of new energy. We would love to have an influx of a new location, a new culture, a new perspective. That's why we're talking to you tonight. Thanks. Thanks for that question, uh, Adnan. And thanks, uh, Tim and Anya, as well. We, we've got a couple of more questions. Sorry to keep you guys on so long. Uh, we have Nejad I'm who says, have to excuse myself yeah. in five minutes, I'm afraid sure, to say. Sure. Uh, do we have any obligations to you after the program or maybe some supervision when we return to our country? Um, no? No. We, uh, we expect you all to donate a million euros two years after you leave us. Other than that, nothing. Uh, uh, no, we, we, uh, we feel we really take it on for us to launch you. Uh, people keep in touch with us. People come back and visit all the time. Uh, uh, and um, and that's, what we're, that's what we're interested in doing. There's no obligation. Uh, there's just most of our people want to stay in touch with us. Uh, as uh, someone in my, I have the privilege of working with colleagues all over the world as a head of school. I'm frequently staying in touch with some of our, our, our previous interns and our residents who need help looking for jobs as I do references and all that sort of thing. And I always support our folks if they earn it. Uh, <laughs> uh, and, and they all do. Uh, yeah. But, you know, so those kinds of relationships are there, but there's no obligations from you to us. We actually believe there's an obligation from us to you to setting you on a great career as an educator. Really, that's what we feel is an sure. obligation. All right. Uh, one last question. Actually, we have a couple of comments and questions, but the last one, I'm pretty sure I know the answer to. Uh, Yasminka says, uh, apologies, let me go back. Alma says, I'm an English teacher. Are there possibilities to stay and work in Germany after completing the 12 month residency? Um, Tim Kelly, uh, do you want to answer that one or Anya? Yeah, we, we typically have. Uh, uh, we do some, we are interested, we have a pool of people who, uh, if we're looking for teachers and are interested, we we sometimes are interested in hiring. I would say we hire somebody on at least every other year. But there's no guarantee to that. 
right? Sure. If there's an opportunity, or if we're, you know, if you interview some other people type of thing. But we're always interested in in in-house folks because we know them and trust them. Um, the other thing is, again, uh, given our school's reputation, given your level of experience, people who leave us tend to have a, a good chance to get jobs elsewhere, including here in Germany. Um, so uh, there's a lot of English speaking teaching opportunities in Germany itself. It's over 25 international schools in Germany. Um, a lot of the German schools are looking for English speakers to teach, particularly as there's been an influx of various immigrants into Germany. So the answer is a question. There are opportunities if you uh, to teach in English in Germany and in Europe. Um, and if you work at our school, that's only going to help your abilities of getting a job elsewhere. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. I know, Tim, that you have to leave us. So I'll just read one last comment for everyone before you do. Um, Yasmin Kaveri made a very, very good point here. Uh, we can get permission to take one year unpaid leave if we're going to study or some sort of professional development abroad with proof. I believe there's some paperwork that needs to be shown and the Ministry of Education in Bosnia is obliged to provide a uh, 12 month uh, leave of absence. So for everyone, okay. I'm pretty sure you've got the same, I'm pretty sure it's the same in Republika Srpska and Federation of BIH for those that are on the call, um, but we can explore that a little bit further. Yasmika, thank you for sharing that because I'm also learning a few things along the way here. Uh, with that being said, I think we've had Tim, Anya and the team for at least hour, almost an hour and a half. I just want to thank both of you and your entire team for being here with us, for sharing the information. We, we've probably got a million other questions as well, but please join me in thanking uh, Tim, Anya and the entire team from the International School of Stuttgart for sharing a little bit of their experiences and information with uh, teachers in Bosnia and Herzegovina in our pilot, uh, let's say, collaboration. Hopefully this collaboration will uh, last many years down the track and that we will have uh, a large number of uh, teachers from Bosnia and Herzegovina going to Germany, gaining experiences, bringing that knowledge back to advance and improve the educational system in Bosnia and Herzegovina. So guys, please a uh, round of applause, a digital and uh, audio <laughs> one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all very much. So Thank we look guys. forward to hearing from you. And Eddie will be in touch then about the next steps. Absolutely. And for everyone, before you leave, I've pasted a link into the chat. This is the link. I've created the page on the BH Futures Foundation webpage where you'll have more information. This is also the page where I will put up this recording via our YouTube channel so you can re-watch and share with other teaching colleagues who are not able to join us. We had about half of the people who registered join us on this call, which is very typical. Some people couldn't make it. Some people already yeah. asked me for the recording, which is great. You'll find more information. And also uh, the plan is you can apply directly to the International School in Stuttgart. Uh, the, the approach I've discussed with Anya is that you guys apply through the foundation first based on these principles. We will then shortlist candidates. We don't want to overwhelm the international school with applications from Bosnia. That would not be a good start to, to our relationship to have to review so many applications. I will work closely with Anya, Tim, and the rest of the team to ensure that we have all the parameters correct. We will shortlist a bunch of candidates, and we will then pass that information on to the international school in Stuttgart. So think of the foundation as a preliminary filter for applicants before we get on to the last application process. If you have any other questions that I can help answer without keeping Anya and Tim here, feel free to reach out to me via email and via uh, any other comms channels that you prefer. So thanks very much, everyone, for being here with us tonight. Yeah. Have a lovely evening. Thank you evening. very much, everybody. Thank you. Ciao. Take care. See you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>